next week. He's a recent grad. He's a recent grad? So a guy my age? <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> Oh, okay. So he's been working, getting the company up and operating. Then uh, the next week is Kevin Yiannopoulos, who's a valuation specialist uh, with Brueggemann Johnson and Yiannopoulos. Got his own firm. Um, he's a director there. Maybe I, uh, I, don't, I don't know him, but uh, he is a grad and he lives in Who would play in the 13th? Is he coming for the football game? That's one of the dean's recruiting tricks, right? Oregon State. Oregon State. Uh, after that, Josh Coates, CEO of a company called Instructure. Um, Joseph Lake, who's a retired founder uh, and with the Children's Miracle Network. That guy is awesome. I had lunch with him. Okay, so I'm going to end the suspense and I'm going to jump around in the agenda and I want to introduce Katie Hollinson. Oh, Kate, Katie <laughs> works in external relations with the dean and is the coordinator for our speakers for the class. Uh, and she has been with the university seven years, six years? Seven years uh, from the Midwest. Not too much of an accent, but a little bit there. Chicago gal. Um, and if you couldn't guess, she has a degree from the University of Wisconsin in communication, is that right? And yeah. then went on to grad school and has a degree in journalism. So why is she bashful and shy? And <laughs> so Katie is a great resource for us, a great gal. She'll be here, I think, most of the Fridays. Uh, and she will help us uh, get speakers, get them engaged, and um, answer questions for us. Uh, you'll see the next week. Oh, Katie is married, lives here in town. 17-month-old <coughs> daughter, is that right? So, huh? I said her name's Stevie. She's What would you expect? Will she be coming to class this semester? <laughs> Are you going to wait until the terrible twos arrive and then burn it? So, that's Katie. Thank you, Katie, for yeah, the Yeah, so everyone in our um, office helps book the speakers. Um, so, it'll either be me or Katie. Um, we'll have to figure out which one of So do you know about the external relations uh, department here at the business school? So um, how do we get a business school like this, right? This is not exactly state money that uh, the legislator said, oh, let's pump $75 million <coughs> into a new business building for, new building for the business school at the U. Uh, so everybody um, is sort of responsible for raising their own funds. And uh, the way we do that is to engage in positive relations with those who would be supporters or have benefited from uh, the business school over the years. So the dean has a staff of, what must there be? Six, seven of you? Yeah, we were at nine and we just left. We're around nine. Around nine, <laughs> give or take, with vacancies to be filled. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a talented group, and so they are rated constantly. Um, the gal who helped us most last semester is off with her husband to grad school at the University of Texas, I think, right, down yeah. in Austin. Yeah. Uh, but Katie has been helping us get uh, speakers. 
Uh, and it's all part of our engagement and outreach program from the business school. Stay connected with alums, stay uh, connected with friends, develop new friends, and tell the story about what all positive things happen at the business school. Well, and the other thing is getting our alumni connected back with you guys. As Al mentioned it earlier, it's such a huge part of the class in terms of the networking. I mean, you're getting the chance to interact with people that have had really successful careers in business. We encourage you to take advantage of that. Give them a business card. Introduce yourself. Like that's what they're here for. You know, be interactive with them. That's that's what they want to come come to do is interact with students. So it's a pretty easy sell for us when you have a group like this. I'm speaking to the bio board. They're all a lot smarter than us. You know? So it'll be great. I mean, I think. You'll pick up a theme throughout the course of networking and how networking helps us and how important it is to uh, your success in business careers. Um, so when Katie talks about connecting back in, our alums are as interested in that as most of you are uh, because the U is a great, great pool of talent and opportunity for businesses. So that's a little bit about initially who our speakers are. Um, take a look at the syllabus and you'll see some information about those for the rest of the semester. Uh, your classmates are a cross-section of graduate and undergraduate <coughs> students uh, from second year on to uh, pretty mature uh, business people who've returned to pick up an MBA or uh, do some coursework. Uh, I went through and tried to pick out some highlights uh, we've got some uh, military folks, got a couple uh, Marines um, in the course this year, former Navy person, we've got some uh, former school teachers, a couple soccer coaches, we've got some uh, public relations majors. We are uh, blessed with a lot of masters of accounting students. <laughs> All right, finally a chuckle. <laughs> Is this the accounting way or what? <laughs> have they clustered? Have they clustered up? Have you ever noticed that accounting students sometimes do kind of have their own little club? And there's a few over there. <laughs> Trust me, there are always outliers, right? Um, They'll be over here next week. <laughs> so see where the power is shot. We've got technology people. We've got the systems administrator for the business school in class. So um, that is always uh, a great resource to have. Um, we've got uh, somebody's got a minor in uh, voice presentation. Um, got a couple tennis players, an uh, athletic trainer. Um, somebody's a uh, salesperson over at Nordstrom. Got somebody who runs uh, operations uh, for a company. Uh, we've got somebody who's a marathoner who spent time uh, interning at the Treasury in Washington. I would think that's got to be a pretty interesting uh, experience. Uh, we've got this gal who's worked for seven years at the police department number of positions. Got some folks that do uh, training. I think we've got a JD MBA, so uh, a lawyer business person uh, in class. Um, when you get a chance, and we get, um, hof hopefully, hopefully the rest of you will send in your uh, biographies. Um, <coughs> anything works, right? It's just give a little bit of information about yourself, um, what's interesting and unique, or not. Um, it's just the very common place. I grew up in Salt Lake City and went to high school and came to college and um, <coughs> found myself in class. Um, but usually everybody has a little something more than that. Uh, but send it in and I think it will be a basis for us to connect as we go through the semester, um, which is what we want to um, encourage along the way. Anybody want to tell about themselves before we go on? Yeah? Um, my name's John Day. My bio got in about three minutes after class started, so I apologize for that. Uh, 
Well, it's good to have it. I am, uh, it's in. Uh, I'm a producer for the Walt Disney Company. I work in the video game division of the company. A uh, recent project just released is called Disney Infinity. Um, I graduated from this university a few years ago in business management. I'm originally from Salt Lake City, but I've lived elsewhere in the world. I have two kids, and I'm really looking to work. Um, I was a member of the fencing team here at the University of Utah, also an avid school veteran. Um, yes, my nutshell. Pretty good bio. So there's a good example of how easy it is uh, to go through that. If we had more time, uh, we would do that. But I think uh, the nature of our classmates, we can work on that uh, during class. I want to introduce Stephanie Shu, who is the dean's assistant, and by virtue of that position, falls into helping us with the class. Um, Stephanie is new to the business school. She was spirited away from the pharmacy school, is that right? So uh, she joined us this summer. I've had a chance to work with her over the last three months, and I can tell you she is a delightful person. She has, uh, prior to coming to the university, uh, an early background as a court reporter, so she misses absolutely nothing. Uh, and then, for a few years in between, she's been doing what I think is the world's most important job. So she's got two students who are grad, two, two children who are graduates of the U and two who are attending class now. So um, we have got her back in the workforce here at the U and just delighted. So you'll all get a chance to communicate with Stephanie, I think, during the course of the semester. It's a good contact point. Um, she's a very personable and engaging person. Uh, Stephanie, anything else you'd like to tell about yourself? No, not necessarily about myself. Just, 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 you find a mistake on the text card, the name card, fix it, and when I pick it back up today, I'll find out that it's next week. And I know some people like to use their middle name, or if you prefer a different name on your card, just fix it with your pen and give it back to me. And like Al said, this is one of the ways that we keep track of this in class. So, Just mark up any changes, set them back down here on the table as you leave, and we'll revise them if you want uh, changes. We'll pass them out next week. Can we count on everybody generally to bring their name tents going forward? You're all pretty familiar with that. We'll have some backups in case you want to have a more artistically designed version uh, later on. And uh, if you just signed up for Bottom Campus this week, you may not have thought A little bit about myself. I am uh, a lucky guy, is what I would say. I get to do this uh, for fun after uh, finishing up or partially finishing up a uh, work career. Um, I grew up in the Midwest, went to a uh, public school in Iowa. Started, I was born in 48, so I'm 65. Started, I was thinking about this the other day, why am I an introverted, shy person by nature? And I never got to go to kindergarten. Uh, our school didn't have one. I was a typical baby boomer, we had year I started to school, we had 20 of us start to school in my class, and there were three graduates. Um, and then uh, four schools later, through uh, consolidation of scale in the 50s, um, I got out of school, went to uh, Iowa State University in, um, in Ames, uh, um, studied accounting. A lost soul, my father thought that I should be a farmer like he. Um, that lasted probably three weeks. Um, then he thought, well, OK, I'll support you if you want to be an engineer. That lasted another three months. Uh, and then a parade of things. And finally, as a senior, I was uh, advised that it would be good to finish up my uh, career in college. And so we did a search of the catalog and found I could graduate in accounting. 
and I was getting married, and there were lots of jobs for accountants, and so uh, that's what I became. Um, graduated in accounting, never having worked a single accounting problem. A real, a, a real disgrace for my uh, my faculty advisors. Uh, they advised me that I probably wasn't cut out to be a public accountant, and that I should look for industrial um, companies. I worked my way through college on the railroad, uh, driving spikes. I ended up um, my first management job uh, was supervising a uh, gang of, of 27. Uh, college kids and returning Vietnam vets uh, as we reskinned uh, 25 miles of track across the middle of Iowa. That was quite an experience, um, and uh, that's what, in part, made me decide accounting wasn't so bad. So I spent 28 years with uh, what's now E and Y, or EY, I guess, is the new brand. Uh, some, a couple of you have been there or going there, I think. Uh, started in Iowa, went to their headquarters when it was in Cleveland. That was two years after the river burned. That was a pretty interesting time to be going to Cleveland. Moved on to Virginia, um, spent 10 years there, built a bank auditing and accounting practice, uh, had a regional job in Washington, uh, took care of regulatory liaison at that point. Moved to New York, um, up in Albany, um, took care of a good-sized client there and uh, was in charge of financial services for the New York region. Moved back to Cleveland with a client, uh, got involved in uh, some pretty good-sized projects, year 2000 conversion. So I ended up, uh, because of those consulting projects, with uh, <coughs> what were two of the five largest uh, accounts that Ernst had at that time. Uh, and then moved to Chicago and took care of an international banking company that was uh, Pretty good size. And I coordinated the services uh, for the North American part of their operation, and then was in charge of um, Ernst's financial services practice in Chicago. Left there, um, retired there. I had always wanted to go to San Francisco, and uh, Bank of America got sold, and that was off the table uh, unless I wanted to go to Charlotte. And I said no thanks, and um, went to work for a bank in Tennessee um, as a CFO. Uh, what I call a career in a year. Uh, the company had just doubled its size. The CFO wanted to become the president. They wanted to hire uh, somebody who could come in and replace Dale. Um, I had worked with them as a client five years prior, and so uh, we knew each other. Uh, and I went to work there. I went to. I started uh, just about this time of year. Um, and Labor Day, they uh, did two things. They closed on a merger that doubled their size, and they started. They put in a new general ledger. Uh, the new general ledger didn't work, and um, the other uh, company that they acquired posted their transactions the opposite way. So in banks, you write credits on red tickets and debits on black tickets, and every bank in the country except this bank did that, and they reversed them. They reversed them, and nobody uh, had realized that in the systems area. So we processed transactions for three weeks in reverse. Um, yeah. And it was a new general ledger. So uh, not only did we put them in the wrong direction, but we put them in the wrong accounts. Um, and so uh, my first call with the regulators was a call from uh, our relationship specialist at the Atlanta Fed and said, Al, yeah. I'd like to introduce myself and do this and this and this. I know you're new to the company and in charge of finances. I wanted to let you know that your bank's balance at our Federal Reserve Bank is now larger than all of the other banks combined. We think there might be something wrong, but you take a look and let us know. And there began the career in the year. Um, and the next thing I knew, I was in charge of operations and technology at the company. Dale was back being the CFO. Um, and we had a pretty good sized task force to straighten all of this out. We sold the company uh, about six months later and I had six months to get all of this cleaned up, the record straightened out, deliver a clean company, writing off no more than $25 million. Uh, and then, because I got that done, uh, I got to stay and turn out the lights. I uh, was the last guy to, uh, from the management team to leave. I went to work for a bank in Honolulu as a risk manager. My plan 
after I finished, because I, I had stock options, and I had change of control, and uh, I am set. So I bought a little condominium up in Park City and was going to take a year and go skiing and uh, enjoy the good life. Um, I got a call two weeks after I got here from a search firm saying uh, this bank in Honolulu was looking for somebody to start up a risk management function. And would I talk to them? Um, and I did. And former associate recommended all of the connection kind of stuff. So I took a job um, 2000 with America's smallest international bank, thinking that take me about 18 months to get this thing figured out, straightened out, um, hire a couple people to replace me, have a little shack down by the beach, um, do a pina coladas every night, and uh, put something new on my resume, and off to the big time. Uh, I got there three weeks later, I found out why they were looking for a risk manager. Uh, five weeks later, we were the only bank in the country that was under a regulatory order. Uh, by August, uh, the CEO had retired. We were the only bank in the country selling below book value. For you non-financial types, that means that the bank is worth more broken up and in pieces than it is being run by the management team that was in place at the time. So a new CEO and I become the CFO and we put together a strategic plan and we sell off all of our operations in Asia and close up most of what we were doing in uh, the Southern Hemisphere, and we were on uh, the mainland in Arizona and California and New York, and we got rid of that, and we closed up a little operation in Europe and out in the Atlantic, uh, sent a bunch of money back to uh, our clients. Um, I was the CFO and worked through all of that, sort of put together uh, the internal part of the strategy and the team. Uh, became the president and the chief operating officer. We converted uh, all of our systems. We had seven operating systems, and we worked in five different languages. We put all of that into uh, one system. Um, we changed compensation um, format and evaluation programs, and kind of in charge of doing that. Um, and began sending money back to our shareholders. So when I got there, we were worth $700 million. Uh, over the time I was there, uh, we sent $2 billion back to our shareholders and share repurchases and dividends. The company's worth $2.5 billion at the end of that. After four years, I became the uh, CEO and did that for six years. And while I did that, uh, we had some very good success. Uh, 2009 and 2010, Bank of Hawaii was Forbes Magazine's choice for the best bank in America. So through the recession, uh, we kept our uh, dividend in place. We uh, had earnings every quarter uh, positive through that period of time. Uh, and then I uh, retired thinking I would go do some other things. I'm a partner in investment funds, so we invest in community banks, with subordinated debt uh, out for them. My favorite job is this one, except for the month of March, and I teach at the law school at the University of Hawaii, a program called uh, Lawyers in Business. Uh, that sort of a residue, while I was uh, CEO of Bank of Hawaii, I was chairman of the Board of Regents at the University of Hawaii, uh, as well as chairman of a company called uh, Hawaii Medical Services, a Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, organization. Fascinating company, uh, takes care of health care for 75% of Hawaii's people. So. 880-some thousand uh, folks. I'm a runner, so I've, uh, well, I have been a runner. Um, so I was a, a marathon guy uh, while I was working at the bank. Um, New York and San Francisco and uh, Washington, Honolulu a few times. Never tried anything with altitude. Uh, uh, and I've got a nice family. Um, my wife and I have been married for 43 years. Uh, we've got two children, uh, an engineer, uh, two engineers uh, in the family in Arizona, and a uh, banker uh, in Ohio, and five grandkids, 16 on down to 8 and two years stair steps. Uh, so that's sort of my story. I'll weave in some other things as we go along. Hawaii is a fascinating place. That's where I uh, uh, probably enjoyed the most success learned the most new things. Um, but you heard a little bit about uh, what I did. I was also chairman of the uh, Business Roundtable, which was a lobbying group 
got me involved with politicians there and uh, in Washington. Got to be friends with Hawaii senators. Uh, at the time, we had two 80-plus-year-old senators, so some pretty senior cats. Senator Inouye was number three in line to be president before he passed away last year. Uh, the president, speaking of president, uh, Bank of Hawaii is where the president's grandmother worked. So um, we're uh, kind of affiliated with that. Um, I know uh, lots of records about our president and where things were, where things happened. And, uh, fascinating story, fascinating guy. He's remarkable to watch him uh, on TV this, right, this week, right? 50th anniversary, Dr. King's speech, and uh, see President Obama there. It's a pretty, pretty big change uh, in a few years, as it turns out. So that's a little bit about me. Any questions? Anything I can answer? Yeah. Um, is there a primary reason that you account for not experiencing a downturn that the bank did? Yes, yes, yes. There is. Primary reason. Absolutely. Good luck tonight. Really? <laughs> well, um, what happened uh, is um, we were more affected by the Japanese, our bank was more affected by the Japanese and Asian turndown than any other bank in the country. Right? America's smallest international bank and we're going Pacific. So we opened in Tokyo, we opened in Taiwan, we're uh, in Seoul, in um, Hong Kong, and going to Manila. Uh, and the Japanese economy had sort of swept over Hawaii and, and then taken a, a real uh, downturn. And so it drugged down a lot of what? So we began to look for alternatives by right, having committed to a strategy. And it was just a terrible time to be expanding across Asia. Um, and so we unwound all of that. I see. So um, uh, my um, CEO, who moved me through these jobs, had come from um, a bank in Illinois that had failed, a company called Continental Illinois, the biggest failure at the time in the country. And Mike had worked out most of their loans and tur turned that around. Uh, so we became kind of turnaround people. Uh, and so until 2005, basically what we were doing was imploding, cleaning up the company when everybody else was going bonkers and spending. Uh, 2006, our mortgage company was the largest mortgage originator in Hawaii. By 2008, we were number five. By 2010, we're back to two. It wasn't that we uh, had taken so much share away, it was that they had failed and left the island. So we were just in the counter cycle. Um, and, and you will hear me say along the way a phrase about leadership called courses for courses. Uh, my boss taught me that. Um, and I was quite nervous, right, when he said, well, you're going to be the president and then you'll be the CEO. Uh, because, as you heard, I was an accountant and a uh, pretty introverted guy uh, and not used to work in the, the outside audience. Um, but as it turned out, um, my timing coming into that job in 2004 uh, was pretty fortunate. Um, and Mike's a good picker. He went on, he's now, C he's now chairman of the board at Citigroup. Okay, okay. So he's, uh, he's worked this magic a few times. So that's a long explanation of how I think we were successful. But I could go through it piece by piece. And if we have, if we have time where I'm doing a session, I'll tell you about the turnaround and our agenda and how we did it and compensated people and those sort of things. Let's, um, I'm just gonna pass out the practice quiz. We're sneaking up here on, <coughs> Sure everybody got a name tag that's here. Did anybody not get one? If you didn't, come down and see if your names here. If not, make one because this will backfire. Everybody doesn't get one. And then I'll.